In inferential statistics, we basically try to find if there are links between variables or differences between variables. And this basically depends on thinking about the population that you have in mind and trying to ascertain whether the sample that you're looking at is actually rather similar to it or rather different. And in terms of the actual uh, mathematics involved, a lot of inferential statistics are based on um, what we would call the normal distribution. This means the normal uh, way in which different values are arranged within a population. And you may well have come across this bell-shaped curve which shows the normal way in which values are distributed amongst a particular variable. So let's imagine that this was the height of children in a school. You might find that most of the children are bunched up in a middle value. Some were very small, short and some were very tall. Uh, similarly, if you took the weight of all the patients in a hospital, uh, or let's say all, all the men patients, male patients in a hospital, you might find that most of their weights were bunched up in, the, in central values, but some would be very light and some would be very heavy. So this graph shows typically what variables are like within most populations, but not all. And it's important to realize that there are many populations where this distribution would not be appropriate. Just to point out then that we have a mean here, but notice that we give a different um, symbol for the mean. It's not X bar anymore because that's the mean of a sample. This is the Greek letter uh, mu, which is uh, used for population mean. So if we think more about this bunching up in the middle, uh, an interesting feature of normal distributions is that 95% of all the values are found in the centre within approximately plus or minus two standard deviations. Don't worry about how this is found, that's not something we need to concern ourselves with really. But you can see from the diagram here that 68% in the blue are really close to the mean and if we go a bit further towards the edges, we spread out a bit, we can find that 95% are there and the 100% of course span the whole range from the very smallest to the very greatest. Now in actual fact this diagram doesn't show standard deviations, it shows standard errors. We're not going to concern ourselves with that fact, we're just going to stick to uh, the, the basics for the time being. So the point is that most of the values are close to the centre and that's the point that inferential statistics holds on to because when you're looking for differences you're looking for things that are not in the centre they're at the edges if you're looking for similarities you're looking for things that are in the centre bunched up in the middle with everything else so let's take an example Let's imagine that uh, you are interested in a particular type of car and you do a little bit of research uh, in your town and you find out, you maybe do a survey, and you find out the mean lifespan for this particular type of car. It could be, I don't know, a Vauxhall Opel or whatever type you, you, you want to, get, uh, to think of. Uh, so you have your value and now you want to compare that mean value with a typical distribution of the lifespan for cars of the same era, so cars of the same sort produced roughly at the same time. And you, you're interested to know whether the, the lifespan of this particular car is um, fairly average or whether it's actually rather different perhaps to typical cars. So if your mean value x bar falls within the extreme edges of the distribution that is beyond the 5% mark either side, so in other words, not within the 95 in the middle, but in the 5% either end. We might say that the probability of your mean belonging to this normal, typical population is less than 0 0.05, less than 5%. Written down, we would write that P is uh, less than 0 0.05. So what does that mean? Well, it means that actually it's 
quite likely that your chosen car has a significantly lower lifespan, let's say, or, or possibly greater, than um, cars overall. So if the life's, if the mean value is down on the left-hand side, it's significantly lower. If it's up on the right-hand side, in that little yellow bit on the right-hand side there, then it would be significantly higher. The point is, it's significantly different. So probability small, so the chances of significant difference are increased. So how exactly do we use this in the context of inferential statistics? Well, we start off usually with a hypothesis. In quantitative deductive research, it's often the case that we start off with a predetermined idea or a hypothesis. So for example, in the case of your car, you might have had this preconceived idea that your car that you'd chosen seemed to have a particularly short lifespan and so you you know you started off going into your research with this preconceived idea that actually there was something amiss uh, and if you think about it this relates to some extent to your original ontology the, the, the whole reason why you're doing the research. The typical way that hypotheses are worded is as follows. We have two options the null hypothesis, given the symbol HO, or H0, uh, that there is no significant difference between the individuals and the groups, uh, whatever it is that you're thinking about, and any observed difference is, is merely due to chance. So in the case of the cars, your null hypothesis would be that there is no uh, significant difference between the lifespan of your chosen car and cars in general. The alternate hypothesis, H1, is that there is a significant difference between the two groups or categories in which you're interested. So how do probabilities and hypotheses link to the sort of statistical tests that you may have heard of. Well, first of all, the output of a statistical test is a probability. Statistical tests don't tell us whether things are definitely a certain way. They don't definitely tell you that your car is has a significantly shorter lifespan to everybody else's. They give you the probability that it is. And we call those probabilities p-values, p for probability. And we decide, as researchers, whether the probabilities are significant. So how do we do that? Well, we ascertain what the p-value is. And if we find that it is smaller than 0 0.05, in other words, 5%, if it's less than, if, if it actually is really at the edges of the typical normal distribution, not bunched up in the 95% middle, then we say that um, it implies that our statistics are significant, that the value that we've found is actually uh, significantly different from the normal population. That being the case, we would reject our null hypothesis H0 and accept our alternate hypothesis H1. So in our car example, we might deduce that our chosen car type, which is would be our sample, is significantly different from the typical cars, the population, if the probability that we work out is less than 0 0.05. When we carry out a statistical test, the first thing we do is to calculate a test statistic, and that will depend on the nature of the test that we uh, carry out. And from that, we then find a p-value. Now, in days gone by, that involved quite fancy mathematics. But these days, that is done by our software, and we don't have to worry about it. All we have to do is select the right test. And then we decide whether our p-value is significant or not. And we have to apply a significance level, and I'll tell you about that in a moment. And having done that, we then decide to accept or reject our null hypothesis. Is our sample significantly different to the population, or is it actually pretty much the same?
So we've been making reference to 5% or 0.05 and that is a significance level. And you can see that it's sometimes given the Greek letter alpha. So it's typically set at 5% and we typically therefore decide that if the probability we, we end up calculating is less than 0 0.05 then we would decide that our result is significantly different. Put another way, this means that we would accept H1, the alternate hypothesis, if P, the probability, is less than 0 0.05 or less than 5%. However, we can set significance levels um, wherever we like, really. And if we want to be really sure of significant difference, then we do is an even finer, as it were, more refined significance level, such as 1%, where we would need a, a p-value, a probability of less than 0 0.001. In other words, a probability that's not just in the edge, the 5% edges, but in the 1% edges, in other words, outside the middle 99%. You can see that, that there's a link to a video that goes over some of these concepts, if you are interested also. There are many different types of statistical tests, and certainly with a package such as SPSS, the, the options are um, really quite mind-blowing. However, we can very simply divide them into two main categories. Many statistical tests look for differences, things like t-tests and ANOVA, analysis of variance, typically look for differences. Very often, we, it's not differences we're interested in, we're looking for links. Things like correlation and regression will help us look for links. So one important statistical test is called the t-test uh, and it's often seen as the student's t-test uh, named after not so much as uh, named after students but after a person whose nickname was student uh, and this is a statistical test which calculates a test statistic as it happens called t. Don't worry about why it's called t, it, it just happens to be called t. The purpose of the test is to help us determine if there's a significant difference between the mean values of two samples or two groups. So you've got a group of, let's say, two completely different cars, picking up on our earlier example. So you've got Vauxhalls in one group, Fords in another. You get the mean lifespan of the one. You, you've got um, the lifespans of, of, of one group. You've got the lifespans of the other group. And you want to see if there's a, a, a difference. So by using Excel or some other package, we can put the data in. We don't need to do anything mathematically to that data beforehand. The software will actually calculate the means and then go on to calculate the test statistic and then it produces a probability. It's at the point of the probability that we have to start deciding whether we've got a significant difference. Another important statistical test is analysis of variance, often abbreviated to ANOVA. And this can be thought of as an extension of a t-test, whereas a t-test compares the means of two groups, an ANOVA can be used to compare the means of more than two groups. It could be three, four, five, whatever. So this time, instead of just comparing Vauxhalls and Fords, you could be comparing Vauxhalls, Fords, Volkswagens, whatever. Uh, again, it's the software that does all the calculation for us and produces a probability and we decide whether that gives us significance or not.